I have twice before urgently called the attention of Congress to the necessity of legislation for the protection of the lives of railroad employees, but nothing has been yet done. What today is called Old Town Alexandria, Virginia, was a heavily industrial area a century ago, with railroads crisscrossing streets that today are used by residents, commuters, and tourists. It was here that a dry goods salesman named Eli Janney would invent a device that would change the railroad industry. But who was this man, and how did he come about to invent what we know today as the knuckle coupler? Eli Hamilton Janney was born in 1831 in Loudoun County, Virginia. He was the ninth of 11 children in his Quaker family, many of whom went on to successful careers. He spent his early adult years in Loudoun County as a farmer. Janney moved to Alexandria as the Civil War approached. Those times caused divisions among many families across the nation, including the Janneys. Although emotionally loyal to Virginia, Quakers increasingly opposed slavery. Janney himself did not share that sentiment and was asked to resign from his congregation as a result. Janney joined the Confederate Army shortly after the outbreak of the war, ultimately becoming a major on the staff of Robert E. Lee as a quartermaster. With the end of the Civil War, Janney completed his discharge process and returned to Alexandria as a dry goods salesman. It was at this time that he would show strong personal interest in one of the biggest labor issues facing the U.S. railroads, the safety of link and pin freight car couplers. Alexandria at this time was a bustling port and industrial area, a far cry from the historical area populated by boutique stores that we know today. Multiple railroad lines crisscrossed the area. The Orange and Alexandria Railroad originated here. It had a major roundhouse and repair facilities near what today is the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office Complex. With the rapid expansion of railroads in the post-Civil War period, worker safety drew national attention. Car couplers in particular posed serious dangers. About 40% of all railroad worker injuries involved car couplers. It was as big a concern as automobile safety was in the 1960s, or internet security is today. Inventors across the country tried to find a solution to the problem, assuming that whoever found a better coupler would reap substantial financial rewards. Most focus on making the conventional Lincoln pin a hands-free operation. Janney's first patent in 1868 took this approach. That addressed worker safety, but did little to solve the other problems with traditional couplers. They broke easily, causing derailments, and could not handle large, heavy loads limiting railroad efficiency. Jenny lived and worked near the Orange and Alexandria Rail Yard. He is said to have taken a personal interest in worker safety from witnessing the results of unsafe equipment. Local folklore has it that he spent his lunch breaks whittling different shapes for a coupler from scrap wood. During one such break, Jenny had the eureka moment that other hundreds of inventors had missed. Janney folded his own hands, giving him the idea of the knuckle coupler. The result was a semi-automatic coupler, the knuckle coupler, patented in 1873. Janney quit his day job and established the Janney Car Coupling Company the following year. But Janney himself had no engineering training and little experience with the big business. He would need such resources to break into the growing railroad market. Prototype tests sponsored by local backers drew the attention of railroads everywhere including the Pennsylvania Railroad and one of its major suppliers, the McConway Torley Company of Pittsburgh. McConway Torley brought the manufacturing and business capabilities that Janney and his company lacked. Its relationship with the Pennsylvania Railroad would help assure a mass market for the new coupler. Janney licensed his invention to McConway and Torley in 1877 
for a one-time payment of $300. That was about twice the annual average wage for a blue-collar worker at the time. But it would be his only income from McConway and Torley for his invention. From that point on, Janney was a side figure in the evolution of his invention. McConway and Torley became the dominant producer of Janney couplers. Janney and his company continued patenting tweaks to the knuckle coupler, but could not keep up with larger firms. Janney received local and national attention for his invention. His every move was reported in the society and business pages, but he never made any significant income from his invention after licensing it. Automatic couplers were mandated by Congress at the turn of the 20th century, but at the time, Janney's original patents had expired. His most notable activities involved commemorative functions for Confederate veterans. Eli Janney died in 1912, a decade after automatic couplers became standard in the United States. He was regarded as a distinguished member of society for his invention. National obituaries mentioned him in the same sentences as other famous inventors of his age, including Wilbur Wright. But he died penniless, with nothing to leave to his family other than unfinished patents. His daughter, Elizabeth, submitted Janney's final patent following his death marking the end of the Janney Car Coupling Company. Today, Janney is remembered by the street in Alexandria on which he once resided. McConway and Torley remain one of the major producers of Janney-style couplers in the United States. The innovation revolutionized rail traffic in the United States. It reduced worker injuries dramatically and made possible freight trains two miles long compared with the 20 car trains that relied on Lincoln pin couplers. Eli Hamilton Janney's remains rest peacefully in a cemetery not far from the grounds that once handled hundreds of train cars daily. We often wonder why a lowly dry goods salesman was so concerned with this problem, but perhaps it was just for the public good, and that might be good enough.